Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 36, it's our first of 2023 and I am Amy Palco and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is my digital home from home, a place where I get to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects. But before we get to all of the knitting, <laughs> there's a little bit of housekeeping that needs to be done. So if you look in the box below, you will see uh, all of the show notes for today's episode. So anything that I mention will be included there. There will also be a link to my Patreon. And if you click through to see that, then you will get to a free page where you will get more detailed show notes that include photographs. If you do want to support me on Patreon, you're most welcome to do that. There's quite a lot of content going up there these days, including a new monthly Sit and Knit With Me episode that is going up kind of mid-month. So the first of those went up. I've got a couple of um, articles that I've written, including a free one actually, about perfectionism in our knitting. So I'll share the link to that also. Uh, there's also weekly Zoom calls and monthly goddess readings and all kinds of good stuff. So feel free to go and check all of that out. Other ways to support the channel and me would be through the Ko-fi. So I've got a Ko-fi link, I will post that too. And of course you can like, subscribe and comment. I always love to read your comments. It feels like we are absolutely in conversation and connection with each other. And this wonderful community just, yeah, absolutely warms my heart and makes me feel really good. So <laughs> I hope it makes you feel really good too. <laughs> So other piece of news, I have a business address. Oh, so, <laughs> so I have been approached several times in the past by people who wanted to send something, whether it's a prize or a gift or whatever, and uh, they've wanted my address. And that's absolutely fine. I've been very willing to, to give that, but I wanted to make it a little bit more formal. So I now have a business address and I will post that also in the description box below so that you can, you can access that if you need to. Uh, last piece of housekeeping, it is, yes, it is the last piece of housekeeping. <laughs> the Crea Bea, who's Rebecca, and I are co-hosting a cal at the moment, and it's called the Let's Lento. So we are all knitting the Lento sweater, which is a beautiful, simple raglan design by Yona Hietala, which was published, I think, in, Lina Magazine issue 11. You can access the pattern on Ravelry but also on Lina's own website. So you're more than welcome to join in. We started on the 5th of January. We go until the 5th of March. 
it is a knit along that's being run on Instagram only because neither Rebecca nor I really use Ravelry very much. So <laughs> Instagram means that we can really follow and engage with everybody who's participating. So if you post an image of your whip or your finished object or both, <laughs> use the hashtag Let's Lento. And after the 5th of March, we'll be drawing some names for some prizes. And I'll be sharing a little bit more about those later on, but I have a, some really beautiful prizes to share with you. So there we go. I'll also share my own Lento and some other Lento plants. <laughs> We've discovered that it's not possible just to knit one Lento. <laughs> So let's begin with what I'm wearing then, my loves. This is the Dorney sweater. It is also by the Crea Bea, Rebecca Clo. I shared this last episode because it was a newly finished object and I'm wearing it today in honour of the Dorney release. So I am recording this on Friday. Yes, it's Friday. <laughs> uh, the 27th of January and Today is the day that the Dorney is released. So it's now available on Ravelry. It is a beautiful top down all over cable. I will just stand up to show you. Oh, there we go. All over cable sweater. It is knitted at an Aran weight gauge, but I actually got gauge with DK weight and lace weight. So held together. I'll just show you my yarn combination. It's this here, which is New Lanark Spinning. And this is in the Rowan color where you can see it's beautifully tweedy. It's got these green and red flecks. And I held it with this, which is Holst Titicaca in the colorway Blossom. So I held these two together and I got Gage, which I was very pleased about. And it's resulted in this beautiful fabric. It's very soft and very lovely. Now, I was very fortunate to be chosen as a test knitter for this particular jumper, which is why I've got it all knitted up before it's released. <laughs> and also I live in the same city as Rebecca and Rebecca and I go to the same knit night. And sometimes we meet up as well for, for a wee cheeky glass of wine. Um, sometimes coffee, but sometimes wine. <laughs> and so uh, she asked if I would be willing to go and get my photograph taken in my lovely Dorney sweater and to create some promotion photographs and some photographs for the pattern PDF and for Ravelry. And so we met up on Sunday um, with another friend from Knit Night, Yenny, who is Finglish Knits on Instagram. And we had so much fun. <laughs> uh, I have not been very well this month, which I will share a little bit more about later. But um, it was just so lovely to feel myself back out in the world doing something fun and something that's part of a community and something that's creative. It felt very lovely to me. And it was in the beautiful city that I live in. <laughs> and Edinburgh always puts on a good show. So <laughs> we had a wonderful photographer called Jasmine Bauer. I highly recommend her if you are needing any photography work done in and around Edinburgh. I will leave her details in the description box below also. So there we go. That's the, that's the Dorney. I, oh, I should say too, actually, is that my neckband is a little bit wider, I think, than what you will get with the pattern now, because I think there were some edits made to the number of stitches that would be picked up, which would make a, a smaller, tighter neckband. But to get this wider neckband, I just picked up one stitch for every stitch. To create and it's almost like a boat neck I actually I really like it it gets it gives me a little bit more space around my neck which I quite like but I think it's actually very flattering and I think it really sits nicely so uh so yes <laughs> there we go that's the Dorney sweater now January has not been a very kind month <laughs> uh, I got sick on the 3rd of January it was and was really out of action for a good couple of weeks. And then my husband got sick as well. And so we've really not been out and about and doing very much at all. And certainly while I was very sick, I was unable to do any knitting at all. Therefore, it is completely miraculous to me that I have quite so many finished objects to show you today. <laughs> I don't know quite where they've all come from. I think January is one of these magic months that just seems to on and on and on and on 
<laughs> it, uh, and in fact, it's still not over. So, um, so yes, there may still be another finished object before the end of January. But I will share with you the very first. And this is a project which I was working on in the previous episode. I have now cast it off and finally washed and blocked it just the other day there because um, cause I've been recovering from not being well. I really didn't feel like scrambling around on the floor pinning out a shawl. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I did finally get round to it and here it is. <gasps> it's so pretty. <laughs> I'm so pleased. This is the Curvette Shawl by Stephen West. Now the Curvette Shawl originally, I think, uses four colours of fingering weight and one contrast skein of mohair. I did not do that. I used one colour the whole way through and this is undyed. I'll show you the yarn. This is undyed two ply alpaca and it is single clip, which means it's just come from the one alpaca. That alpaca is this one. Isn't she glorious? <laughs> She's called Zarina. She was born on the 19th of July, 2015. And uh, this clip is from 2019, from a couple of years ago. So you can go to Bobcat Alpacas, which is over in Bonali, which is just outside of Edinburgh, just on the outskirts of Edinburgh, really. Uh, and you can go and meet the alpacas and you can go and take them for a wee walk around the Pentlands, which is what we did for my uh, my birthday back in November. And then they have a yarn cupboard, which is full of balls of delightful alpaca yarn. And I bought two balls of this. So it says that the two ply is circa 571 metres. Circa and then... 571 sounds particularly precise for circa, but anyway. <laughs> so I had approximately uh, two balls of 571 metres each, and this is how much I've got left. So I've still got quite a lot left. And this is the Ching Fibre Mohair Silk from the 2021 Club. And they've actually just announced their, their latest clubs. And I'm very tempted because it was just so lovely to get a, a skein of surprise colourway mohair in the post once a month for three months. <laughs> so I'm very tempted to do that. And I have actually used them all up now as well. But but there we go. So I just used those two colours the whole way through the shawl. And the other main modification that I made is I altered the border. So there is actually some basic shaping in the border. Um, but I did not do that. Uh, I actually just increased the frequency of the eyelet lace rows and I added in almost a thousand gold beads. Now these gold beads are Toho size 6, uh, which gives you just like enough space in the centre of the bead to get a crochet, a very tiny crochet hook, a 0 0.6 millimetre crochet hook through the centre and then to hook onto your yarn and then pop the bead on and um, before knitting the stitch. Honestly, knitting with beads is so simple. There's no mystique around it. <laughs> you literally are putting the bead on with a little crochet hook onto the stitch that you want it to go on and then knitting the stitch. So I did that over and over <laughs> and over and over and over. It's actually 70 grams of, uh, of a seed bead. Uh, I think it's called Rainbow Crystal because it's got gold painted on the inside and then there's like a rainbow glaze around the outside. Uh, so I've got 70 grams of those around the bottom and then I decided to do a little pico bind off. And when I blocked it, I put a blocking wire through each one of these points and pinned out the wire. And that made the edging a little bit more, what well, you can see. Now, oh, that's nice. I'll just sit like this. <laughs> so it's really, really beautiful. It is so, so soft, like so soft and uh, very warm, but also it's actually quite light considering it's got all of these beads in it. 
Um, I did get a question from somebody from my knit night about whether the beads interfered with my, with my long hair when it's worn down. It doesn't interfere at all. It doesn't get tangled or caught or anything. It really just creates, well, it creates a bit of sparkle, obviously, a bit of glam, <laughs> but also it creates a bit of weight and drape to the overall, to the overall piece, which I, which I really like. So that's the Curvette. It's by Stephen West. This is my first Stephen West of, <laughs> of 2023. I will share another Stephen West with you that I have cast on. And um, I suspect there will be more Stephen West patterns as the year goes on, but perhaps not quite so many last year as, as last year, because last year I really did knit quite a lot, particularly because I was giving my talk at Perth Yarn Festival, which incidentally is now the Scottish Yarn Festival. And uh, when I was giving my talk there, it was all about Stephen West shawls and different colour options. So I wanted extra ones to show. So I ended up knitting a lot of Stephen West shawls last year. So I probably won't be knitting quite so many this year, but this is certainly the first of probably quite a few. <laughs> So this is such a lovely piece. Um, it feels like feels like a slice of birthday cake, you know, like sponge and layers and buttercream, vanilla buttercream, and rainbow sprinkles. And <laughs> I'm just I'm really pleased with it. It's it feels like a very wearable piece because, you know, it's such a neutral shade, but with the pop of of neon. And I think we've all agreed now that neon is effectively a neutral anyway. So. <laughs> Uh, but it brings a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of glamour to to something, even just wearing it with jeans and a tee or something. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with it. So, I kind of don't want to take it off now I've put it on. <laughs> but I will, I will, because I have other finished objects to show you. So, the first thing that I cast on and cast off in 2023 is this. Ta -da! <laughs> These are the textured rib gloves by Anne Bud. I have knitted them using Mondim by Rosa Pomar and Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. You can see the brushed alpaca silk, it isn't lace sweet. Let me pull up because uh, the Pulse Titicaca is pretty much a truly sweet. There we go. So you can see the difference in the weight. Oh dear, we're blowing out terribly because I am actually losing the light. But it is quite a bit thicker than lace weight. It gets sold, strangely enough, as Aran weight. I'm not convinced. Maybe with the halo it does out enough to be used as a but anyway I don't use it as that <laughs> I did hold it uh, double with this uh, four ply and uh, this fingering weight and I got an Aran weight gauge because this pattern by Anne Bud is I've never quite seen a pattern like it she manages to include so much information in it and still stay so clear and and it's really easy to follow if you are nervous about or intimidated about knitting gloves with fingers please do not be because download this pattern and you will be away I have I have actually knitted this pattern twice and I've never done the textured rib. I've always just done ordinary rib. But it's up to you. You can absolutely do the textured one. Uh, I started knitting this and uh, for some reason I had it in my head that I had big hands. Uh, so I was knitting the large and I also thought I had worst, worsted. I can never say that word. Worsted? Worsted? Worsted weight. <laughs> <laughs> Worsted weight yarn. I did not. I had Aaron and I have small hands. <laughs> so um, I knitted most of the palm and discovered that I had like many, many extra inches and it was not going to work. So I had to rip it all back. And then I cast on again and knitted the Aaron weight gauge option and the second size, which is the small adult hands. 
and uh, this is what I've got. I used, I just used my DPNs, um, so it was very straightforward to use. And then you try on, look at these. And then you try on your gloves as you go so that you can knit the right length for each finger. So it's really easy to modify and get a custom fit. I am so pleased with these. I finished them, I knitted them. I actually got sick on, third, on the, the evening of the third and earlier on in the day on the third, I'd gone out for a walk and I wore these gloves and I had to take them off halfway around because my hands were too hot. That never happens. I do not have hot hands. <laughs> So, so they're clearly doing the job. Um, I had heard a little bit about um, the Mondeem sometimes uh, wearing through and I had also heard about it um, stretching a lot. I've not had either of those problems, but I did hold it, as I say, double with this brushed alpaca and they're only just fresh off the needles really and they've not had a huge amount of wear because I've not left the flat very often this month. So. But there we go. That is my textured rib gloves. They are so warm and cozy. They're super easy to knit. They've got um, options for fingering weight, sport weight, DK, no, not DK. Fingering, sport, worsted, <laughs> and Aran weight. So they've got four different gauges and three different sizes. And the, like I said, the pattern is just brilliantly written, very clear, it will absolutely literally hold your hand the whole way through the process. If you do want to knit gloves with with fingers, I was gonna say gloves with hands, you will be knitting it with your own hands, I would imagine. <laughs> but if you want to knit gloves that have fingers, <laughs> then I, um, it, I really do think it's a wonderful pattern. The other pair that I knitted I knitted for my husband a couple of years ago and he wears them often and they've worn really well. I used for his Drops Fable, which is a four ply fingering weight yarn. And I knitted the large, because he does have large hands. But when we put our hands together, it's very clear that he has large hands and I have very small hands. So that's good to know. <laughs> But, uh, but yes, uh, I knitted those and he wears his all the time and really enjoys them. So it was actually because he'd asked for them that I bought the pattern originally. But I have now made use of them myself. And I think I might knit some more gloves with fingers for my children. I know we're just past Christmas. I, I don't know why I'm thinking of gift knitting for next Christmas. This is just the way my brain works. <laughs> but I am considering knitting gloves for my children for next Christmas. <laughs> so there we go. That's the textured gloves. But not content with that, I decided to use even more of my leftovers because I had two balls of the brushed alpaca and I had one ball of the Mondeem. So one ball of the Mondeem, I think it's 400 meters, has now made two gloves and a headband, and I've still got plenty left. I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with all of that. So I cast this on and then promptly uh, got sick and I, I wasn't able to knit. This is how we know that I'm really not well. Uh, I actually, on the evening of the third, stopped knitting and curled up on next to my husband and fell asleep and when I looked at my knitting the next day, I'd actually stopped mid-row. Well, that's a surefire sign that I am not well. <laughs> I would never stop mid-row. <laughs> so uh, I didn't knit much over the coming days. But when I did, it was just to basically add a couple of rows onto this because it's very gentle, just back and forth knitting with two eyelet rows, which you create the kind of the picot edging. And then basically it sat unblock because you need to block it as a flat piece and then you mattress seam the edges in the, to create the inside seam. And uh, I, I just left it sitting for ages. <laughs> How 
However, I then did get, I had a big block party actually because I blocked the shawl, um, I blocked the gloves, I blocked the headband and I blocked the next project as well, all in one evening. So I was clearly feeling, I was feeling my energy coming back to me at that point. So, so I got that all finished and uh, I sewed all my ends in and... Da, da, da. <laughs> How cute am I? <laughs> I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased with this. I, I actually, I really don't know whether we're going to get another cold snap or not. Uh, we have really had a, quite a mild winter. We had a couple of, we had a bit of cold week, maybe cold 10 days when um, temperatures felt really particularly low back in December. But really it's been very mild. Um, so I don't know whether I'm going to get any use out of my glove and headband combo, which is a little bit sad. <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe March, maybe sometimes we get a cold snap in March, maybe February. We'll see. Whatever. I will have a super cozy headband to wear and keep my ears warm. And the other great thing, of course, about a headband is that you can pop your hair up into a ponytail uh, or a bun, which I quite often do. And then I can wear my, my headband and it's not going to, <laughs> it's not going to make some kind of weird um, silhouette of my head. <laughs> so this is actually the School Run headband and it's by Laura Penrose of Penrose Knits. You probably know her podcast. If you don't, do go check it out. <laughs> uh, she is a wonderful designer. She's got quite a few different patterns out. Uh, I have knitted the school run hat for my daughter and the school run mitts. I think I knitted both of those for her for Christmas last year. And she looked super cute in them. I think I used, look at this, BC Garn Samilla in cherry red. See this useless information that we keep locked away in our, in our brains. <laughs> but there we go. So I have knitted the the hat and the gloves, uh, sorry, the fingerless mitts. And now I've knitted the headband to go with my gloves with fingers. So I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. This fabric is incredibly soft. It's not itchy whatsoever. The Mondim is, I think it's got some nylon in it. I could be wrong. But it's uh, it's very soft, uh, it, but it's supposed to be, I think, for socks. Um, but I obviously haven't done that. But holding it with the Drops Brushed Alpaca, which is just, it's like Suri Alpaca, if you've ever felt Suri, pa Suri Alpaca, although it's perhaps not quite as um, fluffy. It is still very fluffy, obviously. Um, but they make a good combo. They have made a good combo. I've been really pleased with them. So there we go. That was my first cast on, cast off. This was my second cast on, then got sick <laughs> and then didn't do the finishing until a couple of nights ago. But uh, but there we go. I do now have my beautiful matching set of accessories. And then, well, then I cast on something and cast off something else, but I will move out of order just slightly because the most recent cast off is this which is vest number four sorry blowing out now I'm actually really losing the light so we are kind of depending on artificial light here so I'm hoping that it's going to the color is actually representing really true which is which is good uh, this is vest number four by my favorite things knitwear my husband asked for a vest and he had very specific requests. So he wanted it to be button up, he wanted it to be plain and he wanted it to have a round neck. I had a good look around on Ravelry for patterns and I finally found this one by my favourite things knitwear, vest number four. It has the button band here this is all blocked, but I'm actually going to, I hung it up to dry. And so I, I think I am actually going to have to steam block it as well, just to get this button band to lie flat. It's knitted from the top. So you knit the back piece first, and then you pick up your stitches along 
the side and then knit down for the, the fronts with the armhole shaping. And then you join to knit the body as a whole piece back and forth. You then after that pick up for your button bands and for your armhole uh, ribbing and for your neck band. Uh, so modifications. <laughs> so I decided I was going to knit this in woolly knit, British wool. So I got Frank to go on and have a look at the website and to pick a colour. And he chose Pine Forest Green and I bought the cone. So this is how much I've got left from a five, <laughs> from a 500 gram cone. Uh, so again, pretty, pretty decent amount actually. I've got plenty there to, well, maybe, you know, like maybe knit another lento. <laughs> you never know. Uh, so I held it double to get gauge, which was great, worked well. Um, I did have an issue with the knitting of it though, because I have the only 4.5 millimeter needles that I have, and it calls for 4.5 millimeter needles, uh, are four inch tips. And because it's knitted back and forth, and because of the weight of the garment, for some reason, I was not able to maintain good tension. And that's really important to me. <laughs> it's really important to me that I um, that I create good tension in my in my knitting, and actually. It's, it's fine, it's evened out a lot. But at one point I did actually uh, transition and go onto straight needles because it was driving me absolutely loopy. So, <laughs> so I rummaged through my craft cupboard, that's what we're calling it these days, uh, for my old uh, straight pins and I used that partially for, for knitting the body. And uh, and then after that, I had uh, slightly, I've got five inch needles for the rib. So that was fine. I switched back to those. Uh, so that was interesting just to go back to, I mean, because I learned on long straight needles. Uh, it's only really relatively recently that I think we've all moved on. Well, so many of us certainly have moved to knit with circular needles. And uh, I really noticed actually that my technique, my style of knitting, is very much influenced by the way in which I learned, which was on these long straight needles. So I would tuck a needle, a long straight needle underneath that arm there like this, and so, and hold it like that. And so that stays very still, very stationary. And then my other pin is held in this hand and it's the one that kind of does all the work. <laughs> it kind of dances around this kind of static pin. And actually, even now that I knit mostly with, in fact, almost exclusively with uh, with the circular needles, unless I'm using DPNs for a, a wee project like this, um, this needle still stays static and this hand still does all the work. I have more on this later on re with regarding a project where I am experimenting with my technique and my style. But there we go. For this, I did switch on to, to long straight needles and then I switched back to the to the circular needles when I had the longer pins, uh, the longer points, sorry. Uh, this, I would say the biggest issue with this <laughs> was the buttonhole band. I really, really struggle with positioning buttonholes on a band. Uh, I can uh, I can really never figure out exactly where they should go and how to make it even. After struggling with it <laughs> for a long time, and I mean like hours, I have finally created buttonholes. So you can see one here and they look relatively even. <laughs> so it was worth spending the time on, but oh my goodness, that was, that was a real effort. Uh, the other big thing that took a bit of effort was this. Now, if you look at vest number four, it doesn't have a pocket. <laughs> but my husband wanted a pocket. To be honest, he wanted three pockets. I talked him down to one. He wanted a 
pocket here, pocket here, and a pocket here. So now he has one pocket here and he doesn't have pockets anywhere else. <laughs> As I told him, this is not a utility garment, darling. This is <laughs> this is a vest that's been knitted uh, in wool at a relatively loose gauge. It's not like super dense fabric. It's not going to support, you know, massive filling of pockets and things. It's going to stretch out of all use. So, so we got one pocket. <laughs> And basically what I did was, uh, when I got up to this place here, I put the next 20 stitches on hold and then I knitted the rest and included, started the armhole shaping. And then when I knitted back, uh, when I got to the place where the stitches were on hold, I created 20 new stitches using the backward loop method and then carried on and finished the row. I then knitted the rest of the of the front and joined for the for the whole body and then when I cast that off I came back to those live stitches and I popped them back on a needle and I knitted back and forth until I had this flap here like that and then I sewed it all down and then I came back to those cast on stitches with the backward loop and I picked up 21 stitches along here and I knitted a couple of rows of one by one rib just to finish it off. So kind of an improvised pocket. Super easy and uh, not complicated, just a little bit fiddly and a little bit more finishing really as we come to the end. I then obviously had to find buttons because this is button up. And so I went to John Lewis's in Edinburgh, which is a big department store. And it used to be, it used to have a wonderful haberdashery department. It is a sorry looking department these days. It looks like they're running it down. There's lots of empty shelves uh, and there's hardly any buttons at all. So I left with no buttons. And instead I went home and I went online and I went to this website here textilegarden.com and I found buttons that he liked which I will show you just now because they literally just arrived in the post so which is why they are not currently on the garment and now I'm throwing them away on the floor um fortunately I bought 10 and only need six so <laughs> I will get that one off the floor eventually here they are oh they really don't want to they are reddish brown, non-varnished, and they are 15 millimeters in diameter. So like I say, I got 10 of them because they sell them in packs of five. I needed six, <laughs> didn't time that very well. But uh, I thought the reddish brown would look really good, let me see, with the dark pine green and actually I checked them with the buttonhole as well and they work perfectly. I was a little bit concerned about that because it recommended in the pattern 16 or 17 millimeter in diameter buttons and I think the two choices that I had for this style of button on textile garden was 15 millimeters or 19 and Frank said he didn't want the bigger buttons so we went for the little ones. There was actually even smaller ones. I think there's 11 millimeter ones as well. Very glad I didn't go for those because actually the 15 millimeter ones are perfect. Although I was concerned when I first looked at them, but they, they I checked them going through the the buttonhole, <laughs> and uh, and it was fine. So so there we go. I'm gonna steam block this, and then I'm gonna sew on the buttons, and then it's gonna be all set for him to wear. So he's really pleased with it. Um, I should say I knitted the second largest size. Uh, there's not a lot, I think it's less positive ease than, um, than is specified in the pattern, but then he didn't want a lot of positive ease. And the other, the other thing that he wanted was he was, wanted it knitted longer. So we've added about 14 centimeters, I think, onto the length. Uh, I was also a little bit concerned about the armholes. Um, quite often when you're converting a pattern written for a woman, woman's body, a female form to a male form, 
uh, you need to pay attention to the depth of the of the chest and of the um, armhole, uh, whether that's a raglan or whether that's drop shoulder or whatever. Um, but actually it was plenty, plenty wide enough and it sits really comfortably on him. Uh, so I'm really pleased with it. More importantly, he's really pleased with it. Uh, I'll get those finishing touches done later this evening and then he'll have it to wear from now on. So I will see if I can get a photograph of him wearing it. He is very camera shy and uh, not really up for, for photographs. Um, but I already know he's going to say no. But if I take a photograph that doesn't include his face, then maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I never know my luck. If I have been fortunate, you will see the results now. <laughs> and if there's nothing here, you'll know he said no. Uh, so, okay. Last <laughs> my last finished object. Yes, there is another finished object. And this is my lento. So, as I said, the Crea Bea and I are doing a lento cow. We had discussed this gosh, I think in September and unfortunately October proved to be a very difficult health month for me. <laughs> You're noticing a pattern? It's not been a good winter. <laughs> but um, but yes, so uh, we didn't end up doing an October. Uh, Rebecca started a new job, then we had Christmas. I mean, just everything started to pile up and uh, the thought of managing and promoting a, a lovely cow where we're all knitting together in a beautiful community and that all sort of started to feel a bit stressful and that's not the point you know so i was really thinking the point of this cow is about gentle company and it's about really enjoying our knitting and it for and for it to be something simple and you know i think a lot of us are gift knitting throughout December, November. <laughs> and this beautiful pattern is, you know, it, it's a, knitted at a, it's knitted on six millimeter needles. So it's knitted at a 15 stitch gauge. So it knits up pretty quick. Uh, it's a lovely way to use up some uh, gorgeous mohair that you might have in your stash um, or some beautiful DK. And, uh, and it's a way to create a, an easy garment for yourself or you know, or for a loved one or for, you know, to give it away. But it's a really lovely way to just to create something that's really easy, really simple and really quick, actually, <laughs> as I discovered. So I will show you my lento. And I have to be careful I don't rustle these button, this wrapper. In fact, I'm just going to move, I'm going to move the buttons away. There we go preserve the buttons. I do still need six of them. <laughs> this is my lento. Oh. Oh. So I cast this on just after I finished the knitting on the headband. Uh, everybody started, well the cow started on the 5th of January and that was really when I was at my sickest. And I was so disappointed. I was, and I felt really frustrated because um, everybody was, you know, getting so excited and casting on their lentils and I desperately wanted to cast mine on. And I really wasn't able to even sit up for very long at that point. And um, it just wasn't, it just wasn't happening. Uh, so I had to wait. And then finally, I felt a little bit more, uh, a little bit more alive. <laughs> And I very slowly <laughs> kicked up my skeins of yarn and my mohair to uh, to to just to cast on, and then it just became that project that helped me to knit myself back to health. So it's it feels soft and it feels gentle and it just look at this, look at those beautiful speckles. This yarn combo has been sitting in my stash waiting to become a lento since last summer. I bought the um, the four ply yarn, which is Kinross four ply from Wee County Yarns in the colourway Porridge. I bought that uh, from Bannock Yarn, which was a 
Fibre Festival and just outside of Stirling, which is not running again, unfortunately. But, um, but yes, I bought it from there and I got my fabulous speckled mohair in the colour Sweet Dreams from the company Cowgirl Blues when I was over in France in the summertime visiting my mum from her local yarn shop, which is My Little Mai in Cognac. And uh, and it's run by it's owned by Stephanie. So I got my beautiful mohair from Stephanie at My Little Mai. And together, I mean, when I was knitting it, it already felt really soft and just, it felt like kindness on my needles. <laughs> that makes any sense um but now that it's washed and blocked I can see a little bobble there I'm gonna pull that off um now that it's washed and blocked it is so incredibly soft I think I've worn this about four times already and actually even although I'm saying it's a very mild winter it's not quite mild enough for a six millimeter needle knit jumper <laughs> or for a 15 stitch gauge jumper uh, it's still a little bit cold. So, but come summer, uh, come summer. Well, actually, I live in Scotland, so, you know, come summer. <laughs> no, come spring, I don't think I'm going to be taking this off. I did helical knitting for my jumper, for my, my lento, which means that I alternated my skeins. Because I was using a speckled yarn, I really wanted to avoid pulling which means all the colours kind of gathering in particular places in the fabric. So instead of that happening, I really wanted to kind of create a kind of a slightly more even variegation through the through the fabric, which meant a bit of yarn management. It's a little bit tricky um, just to, to make sure, particularly when you're coming up to the raglan increases and things, sometimes I had to just like fudge it a little bit. Um, but I will share a link to a tutorial about helical knitting if that's something that you're interested in. If It's particularly helpful if you are knitting with hand-dyed yarn. Hand-dyed yarn is a wonderful, wonderful product and every skein is unique. And because every skein is unique, if you are knitting a larger garment, then sometimes you can start to see where one skein ends and another begins. And the other issue that can sometimes present is this yarn, is this colour pooling in the fabric. And alternating skeins through helical knitting will solve both of those problems. There are various different ways to alternate skeins, but I like helical knitting because it shifts the change of the, of the two skeins um, around the garment or around the, the project. So you're not always changing your yarn in one place, therefore kind of creating a seam in the fabric. Even if that seam is just visible on the inside, it can sometimes create a little bit of a bump. Um, it's sometimes a bit noticeable, but the helical knitting um, kind of displaces the change. And so it's not noticeable at all. Now, like I said, this gorgeous yarn, this mohair is mohair silk from, or it's the kid silk from Cowgirl Blues. And Rika, who works for Cowgirl Blues, very kindly got in touch with me, very, with a very generous offer. So, Cowgirl Blues, which is a wonderful hand dyeing company based in Cape Town in South Africa, have offered us a Cargill sweater quantity, so a sweater quantity for the Cargill sweater, which is another d wonderful design by uh, Rebecca Clo, the Crea Bea. Um, you might remember that I knitted the, the Cargill in Holst Viola, that's the colourway, <laughs> and Drops Lavender. Uh, so I knitted that, that pattern last year. So you'll be able to get your yarn from Cowgirl Blues. The winner will go on and choose which colourway they want and um, they will send it out from South Africa. So that will be an internationally available prize. I say that because currently international shipping from the UK is suspended and has been for the last three weeks I think maybe maybe longer and there was already problems before then so so yes uh, but 
this prize will be shipped from South Africa, so that we won't have we won't have the problems of trying to um, navigate international shipping there. So I'm really excited about that. So after the fifth of March, we'll be going through the Let's Lento hashtag on Instagram and selecting winners, and one winner will be will win the Cowgirl Blues sweater quantity of yarn in a colourway of their choosing to knit the Cargill sweater. And Rebecca very kindly said that she would give a copy of the pattern as well if you didn't already own the pattern. So, how about that for a prize, hey? I've also got another really beautiful prize to show you, which is just sitting here and I just picked this up last week, so I'm so excited. Uh, Ginger Twist Studio is my local yarn shop. It's not very far away from where I live at all and uh, Jess of Ginger Twist just dyes the most beautiful rainbow of colours and she has actually knitted the most fabulous lento in this, using this particular shade of mohair. And so she has given us two Look how it gleams. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Two beautiful skeins of Leading Lady Lace, which is her mohair silk base. So it is 72% mohair, 28% silk in the colorway Voyager. So two skeins, I think, would be enough to do a uh, lento in the first three sizes I think uh, but you don't have to use it for a lento obviously you could use you could put these two skeins towards any beautiful project really um, but there we go that's an incredible um, an incredible prize thank you so much Jess it's absolutely glorious Jess has also put together some lento kits so if you go and check out gingertwiststudio.com and check out her online shop and then go to kits, you'll find some lento options. And uh, she's put together some really fabulous ones. I think you'll really like them. So, so that's another prize. And then I have a third prize to share with you, which is that my auntie, my auntie Lorna, who is the creative genius behind the cocoon tree bags. And in fact, I have a cocoon tree bag just here to show you. This is one of mine. Beautiful. I mean, honestly, her the craftsmanship on her bags is second to none. They're hand finished. Look at this beautiful tassel. Their choice of fabrics, her choice of fabrics are absolutely stunning. The combinations that she puts together are beautiful. They are fully lined and they come in various different sizes. So I'll link to her Etsy shop as well, but she is donating a bag to give away as well. So I have three amazing prizes for our Let's Lento Cal. So like I said, it started on the 5th of January, it goes to the 5th of March, and uh, I really hope you join in. It's a, it's a really fun project, it goes really fast. There are lots of modifications. If you go and check out that hashtag, on Instagram, you will see that lots of people are doing really fun modifications to this pattern. And so there are different options for neck bands and um, different lengths that people are knitting it to and all cat. And then some people are doing stripes. Rebecca did beautiful stripes on hers. Uh, some people are doing different yarn combinations and just really interesting things. So go and check out the hashtag. See. See if it inspires you to cast on and uh, and yeah make sure you use that hashtag on and you'll need to use the hashtag on a post not on a story I mean you can use it on a story because then I love that because then I can share the story um if you if you tag me in your lento uh stories then I can share your story as well and we can all participate and, and celebrate your progress um but make sure that you put a post up that has the Let's Lento hashtag because that's what gets you entry into the prize draw. So that's all super exciting as well. Okay, so that's that's all my finished objects. We're 52 minutes in. I haven't even started on my um, 
on my whips and there's quite a few of those because I just felt like it. So <laughs> but the first thing I want to show you is this because this uses up my leftovers from my lentil. I think I'm playing a pretty tight game of yarn chicken, but I'm really hoping I win. <laughs> so this is the Kinross 4 ply in the colorway porridge, and this is my tiny and much and fast diminishing <laughs> quantity of Cowgirl Blues Kid Silk in the colorway Sweet Dreams. Look at those little pops of colour. Oh. So I had a little bit left and I just love this yarn and I love this yarn combo and I didn't want to leave like a single scrap of it. So I decided that I was going to knit myself. <laughs> I realise this, this is sounds maybe a bit silly, but uh, I decided to knit myself a matching berry because who does not want a matching berry with their new jumper? <laughs> so I knitted one of these uh, in Fonty Tartan and I shared that last episode. This is, like I said, this is using this combo here. So it's, it's um, double stranded. It's the same size as the one before. And I've done all my increases. I've knitted the length that it needed to be and now I've started on my decreases. So, but what I wanted to show you, this is just it's so soft. Honestly, if I just wear these for like the next six months, it would not surprise me. But what I wanted to show you was how different it is. See the difference in the yarn gauge? And sorry, in the fabric gauge. So this is 15 stitches made with a six millimeter needle and this is with a 3.5 millimeter needle and see how differently the uh, the speckles present even on a more sort of highly speckled section so i thought that was really interesting i will take a better photograph of those two together and share that in my show notes on patreon if you want to get a better a better look but I'm really pleased with this. It's such a quick and easy an easy pattern and I think it's a really cute result. I have been wearing my other beast piece quite a lot and I expect I will get quite a lot of wear out of this also. And I just really recommend the pattern. It's by Sari Nordland. Um it was quite uh, it was quite a, an inexpensive pattern. It was like £3.60 or something like that. And uh yeah, you start at the at the I cord and then you move out to these uh, these increases here and like I said now I've started on a series of decreases and it will finish off with an I cord so which is the bit that hugs your head <laughs> so so that's my beast piece that's using up what's left of this very small amount of um, my cowgirl blues so I think I've got about 20 rows to do and they are decreasing so I've got less and less stitches so I'm even if I don't have enough of the mohair to do the eye cord bind off I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have enough of the porridge uh, and I think worse comes to worse I think Rebecca might have a little bit left of the porridge so <laughs> Maybe maybe she would lend me five grams to, to finish off the eye cord on my berry. <laughs> so so yes, there we go. That's the that's my beast beast berry that's using up the leftovers of my lento. And uh, and yeah, so it made me wonder if you are knitting the lento as part of our cal. Uh, are you intent are you going to have any leftovers do you know I mean I have leftovers and I lengthened the body uh, that was and I lengthened the sleeve so it's the two modifications oh no that's not true I did make another modification that I didn't mention in the original pattern this is a folded neckband and I've just done a single one and half the number of uh, rows that it says to do and then I knitted the body longer and I knitted the sleeves longer and I've still got enough left for a hat. 
So yes, if you are going to have leftovers, do you have intentions for them? Uh, are you, can I persuade you into knitting a, a matching beret? <laughs> or is that just me? It might just be me, and that's fine too. <laughs> okay, so next one. Okay, I'm going to share this one because I'm still a little bit undecided about it. Uh, I go through phases. So I cast on for the Aurora Cabin Shawl by Stephen West. I did say this wasn't, the Corvette was not going to be the only Stephen West pattern this year. Uh, I used yarn that I bought for my birthday. And this is Azair Highland. Can you see that? You go in these colours. So this is curry, chocolate, rhubarb, chilli and ice. And uh, it's knitted on a 3.5 needle. It's slip stitches. It's quite a detailed pattern. It's being done as a, again, as another knit along. It's the hybrid knit along cowl. And it's, it's a beautiful pattern. It's a really beautiful pattern. And for some reason, I just feel quite um, conflicted about whether I want to continue with it or not. Uh, I recently saw another friend from Knit Night, Carly. Hi. <laughs> I recently saw her uh, Aurora Cabin Shawl. And at, before I saw hers, I had actually decided to rip mine out. And actually, after seeing hers, I've now completely second-guessed myself and I think that I probably will continue. So I wanted to share it with you because, well, tell me what you think. Should I, should I continue with it? I think I probably should. I love this pop of ice blue with these warmer shades. I think the contrast of that is really stunning. And I think it will look really beautiful in a larger swathe of fabric. I think I'm talking myself into it. <laughs> so there we go. Not very much to show. And in fact, I could say that for all the whips, I'm afraid, because, well, there has been a, a quite a significant number of finished objects. But yes, uh, I think that I probably will keep going with this and see. The next one that I want to show you is this. Oh, throwing all yarn all over the place. This. Oh, for a start, this is black. Like, what am I doing knitting black <laughs> yarn in January? It is one by one rib and it's six inches. That's uh, not very interesting, but what it will become is really interesting. <laughs> so I have cast on for the Ilya by Caitlin Hunter. It was a pattern that came out last year and I really loved it. I love that it's got this kind of like cowl neck band, neckline. Although mine looks a little bit more like a polo neck at the moment, which... <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Maybe I'll block bigger. I don't know. And uh, then it goes into, into this colour work yoke and there's a little bit of colour work detail in the sleeves as well. I am using this for my contrast color which is the one that you start with the first contrast color and it is jc rennie super soft dk in the colorway charcoal yep and i don't think i've ever knitted with yarn quite like this before i mean it's it's 100 percent wool it's really soft i mean like i'm used to holst super soft and be honest it's not doesn't really live up to the name particularly in the knitting of it now it does soften up quite significantly in the washing and blocking but this is soft to begin with uh, I, I think it's got like a two ply structure and one of the plies is very very thin and the other is slightly thicker it creates almost like can you see that do you know it kind of reminded me in structure, although I think it's much a stronger structure um, of uh, Brooklyn Tweed. Is it Shelter? I think. Um, it's got a little bit of, do you see that? 
It's got a little bit of like give in it. It's fascinating. It's very soft. It's very lovely to work with. <laughs> I decided I was going to cast this on at knit night. <laughs> so black one by one rib. Uh, what could go wrong? And actually, I'm quite proud of myself. I did not mess it up. It was. <laughs> I managed to cast on all my stitches, I managed to join in the round without twisting it and uh, I managed to get a good inch or so started on it. And so therefore I am using this wonderful stitch marker that I picked up from Generates, who is Jen who you might remember from the Great British Sewing Bee. She's got a wonderful range of sewing and knitting uh, projects. Uh, notions uh, so I would go and go and check her out I'm going to leave a link to her as well but look at this do you see that knitting is my superpower oh yeah that's why I'm knitting in black in January <laughs> so I'm not going to be solely knitting in black however because this is actually my main color <laughs> and this is undyed West Yorkshire Spinners Jacob's Fleece DK it is again it's very soft but it is more rustic feeling than the super soft from JC Rennie. So that's my main color. That's my contrast color one, which is the main contrast color. And then I went through my stash and I actually I thought that I was going to choose my um, bright yellow DK from, oh, it's Laland DK in the colorway furs. Um, and I thought that was going to be my contrast colour, so it would have been a bright, bright yellow. Instead, I discovered this cone in my stash. It doesn't have any information on it whatsoever. <laughs> it, it does feel like wool, it's not acrylic. Um, I have no idea where it's from. It might actually have been from my grandma's stash maybe when she was getting rid of some yarn. It could have been from her. I really don't know. But check out that yarn combo. Is that not glorious? I'm so excited about this. So this is my contrast, my second contrast colour. So there's quite a lot less of this than there is of this. So this will be like a real pop. But I am so excited about that. And now that I've finished the six inches of one by one rib, uh, I will be doing the short rows and the raglan setup. And then straight after that, you go into the yoke color work. So I'm not far off folks. <laughs> I am nearly there and I'm really excited about it. I have wound off some yarn from the cone. Now, I don't know why, but when I wind yarn in a ball, it ends up like an egg. <laughs> my mum really likes it she's like how do you manage that and I'm like I don't know it's just it just happens <laughs> and in fact I wound all the yarn for Inga from Knitting Traditions I, I gave her her um advent this year her yarn advent scrap yarn advent um as part of a larger podcaster swap and uh, so I think every single one of her balls was, was egg shaped so she can confirm <laughs> that, that every single one ends up looking like this. So there we go. That's my three colours for my Ilya. Don't have a whole lot to show for it yet, but it is a beginning and I am very excited to see that begin to, to take form. And actually, I really just want to lean into the, into the colour work because I haven't done colour work. It doesn't feel like I've done colour work for a long time. And my hands are kind of, you know, they just want colour work. So, yes, that's another um, work in progress. And I have one more work in progress to show you. And I cast this on last night. And I've already made quite a little, quite a bit of progress. So, the first thing I need to say is that this beautiful yarn that I am using is hand spun and given to me by Ivana of the Republic of Me podcast. Uh, she sent it to me, gosh, I think it was April 21, which actually I thought was last year and I realized I've actually lost a whole year. But anyway, 
That was a bit of a shock to discover. Um, it has been sitting in my stash, waiting for the perfect project because this yarn, I mean, for somebody to hand spin yarn for you and, and just, it was such a special, such a special and generous gift that I just it had to be the perfect project. You know, sometimes when we get almost like too precious about our yarn, it can kind of sit in stash for quite a long time because, you know, it has to be the perfect project. I am very fortunate because the perfect project came out just the other week there. It is The Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose, who is one half of the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. It is it's a beautifully simple and effortlessly elegant design. It's free on Ravelry, so you can go download it. If you're going to knit it, please do use the hashtag Saturday Shrug Club so that you can, so I can then see what you're knitting and everybody else can as well. But basically, it's one by one rib in a bulky weight yarn and you knit it to the length that you want and you can wear it as a cowl, you can pull it down over your shoulders. Go and check out the Caddy Jacks Knits uh, podcast and they went to, oh God, I was going to say, I think it's Bainbridge Island in Washington State where Lamb and Kid are. Uh, they did a podcast episode from there so you'll be able to see some versions of the Saturday Shrug there. Uh, so you might want to go and check that out. But uh, there's this yarn is just, look at that, I'm holding it double. And I knitted that since, I just knitted that last night. This is all the more miraculous because <laughs> I don't really enjoy, I feel like I'm making a, a big knitting confession here. I don't really enjoy knitting one by one rib. And this is because I knit by throwing my yarn with my right hand. So let me show you. Uh, okay, so let me see. <laughs> so for example, if I was to knit this next stitch, I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna wrap with this right hand. And then for a purl, I then need to bring my yarn forward and then purl, and then I'll need to bring it back again for the right. So there's a lot of bringing your yarn back and forward the needle when you're doing one by one and you're throwing. What that does for me is it sets up uh, an issue with my wrist because this is the action that's happening all the time, bringing the yarn forward and back. It sets up a, a, a situation, an inflammation, I think, in my wrist, which then creates arm pain. And so I don't, I mean, I can do one by one rib for, like, for example, for the vest number four, you know, if it's just the edging and, you know, the edging around the sleeves and button band, that that's not a problem. What becomes a problem is when it's a whole garment. Uh, I cast on, I don't know if you remember, I'm not even sure if I showed it, um, I cast on the Ripple Camisole, I think the Ripple Cami by Jessie Made Designs and it's on all over rib and uh, I got about halfway through the body and it honestly took me forever just to get halfway up the body and everybody was saying what, what a quick project it was. <laughs> I was like not for me. <laughs> the one by one rib really really slows me down and then it creates pain. So I kind of steer away from one by one rib projects. Uh, I was in the pub with um, Rebecca Chloe just before Christmas and we were talking about that and I got her to show me how she knits one by one rib because she is not a thrower, she's a picker, which is called continental knitting. So you're holding, you're not holding your yarn in your right hand, you're holding it in your left. And so I tried that and I couldn't get it to work for whatever reason. I couldn't understand it. I could. I couldn't. I can do the continental knits, but I couldn't get the continental pearls. And then yesterday, or day before yesterday, I saw somebody share an Instagram reel uh, where they were doing 
uh, combination knitting and they showed how they do their continental pearls. And I went, oh, I can do that. And I sat down and did it. <laughs> so I have been knitting this in a completely different yarn style than I would normally. And I've made so much progress on it. It's so comfortable because I'm not activating that that tricky part for me in my in my hand and in my wrist. And uh, and then I've also got the novelty of doing something a bit new and a bit different. So it's uh, which is really you know encouraging me to to do more. So so yeah, I am doing this as a continental as a continental knitter. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really pleased. I cast on the the pattern uh, says to do a tubular cast on, uh, and I'm I know that that Jackie really loves the the um, cast on the tubular cast on. Uh, I've just done the German twisted cast on to create a stretchy edge, which is very stretchy. So I'm pleased with that, and uh, I'm just gonna keep working away on this because it feels like it is the perfect project. Like I said, for this yarn. Um, this yarn feels like it wants to be a knitted hug and this is the project that lets it be that. I do actually have another skein, another very precious skein that was given to me which is also hand spun from Fibre Muse Shop and uh, it's I've got the perfect project for it as well which I want to cast on later this year and it's going to be a Coivure by Caitlin Hunter because it has this wonderful design, this wonderful colour work design of feathers and I just think this would look so good with that hand spun yarn and I'm going to combine it with some yarn that I got from my grand's stash um, as well so it's, it's very special yarn too so bringing those two special yarns together for that jumper because that yarn feels like it wants to be feathers, this yarn wants to be a hug. <laughs> I know that doesn't make any sense, but it makes sense to me. So there we go. That's <laughs> So that's my uh, Saturday Shrug, a beautiful design by Jackie Rose of Carrie Jack's Knits, knitted up in some beautiful hand spun yarn from the Ivana of Republic of Me podcast. You can find both links to both of their podcasts in the description box below and in my show notes. Okay, so that's all of the fo's that's all of the whips i'm gonna have a quick look honestly this brain fog that everybody spoke about following not being well um is absolutely spot on <laughs> okay dream knitting so i'm kind of combining like acquisitions with plans because i generally always buy yarn with a plan Although I'm slowing down as I say that because I realise I'm going to share with you yarn that has no plan. But anyway, I'm going to start with the yarn that does have a plan. <laughs> you might have seen that Leslie Ann Robinson has done a... And Leslie Ann Robinson is like the queen of brioche. You know, she does the most... Well, Nancy Marshall is, is probably the queen of brioche. Leslie Ann is just the most... I mean, she just takes that, the brioche, and like extends it and, and just creates the most beautiful shawls and jumpers. And she creates, I just, I don't even know how she comes up with it. Do not know how she comes up with it. Beautiful designs. And she has combined something that I thought could be combined, but I had no concept of how to do it. So I'm so glad she's done it. Uh, assigned pooling with brioche. So assigned pooling uh, projects take a yarn that has a small section of it that it is coloured differently and creates a kind of a, almost like a random pattern. So every time you come up to that colour in the skein in the yarn, you then do a particular stitch. Uh, so you kind of create like a random patterning across the across the fabric. So remember what I said about, you know, trying to limit the amount of pooling that happens by doing helical knitting like I did in my lento. With this, it's actually about exaggerating the pooling and about exploring the sort of random nature of it through stitch pattern and through texture. So it's super exciting. Dawn Barker of the Chasing Rabbit 
uh, yarn company produces a lot of this uh, kind of yarn. Oh, I think Skein Cocaine is also producing a lot and Gina's yarn is beautiful too. So you might want to go and check out hers, particularly if you're over in the States. Uh, and, but I used yarn, well, I'm going, going to, I've not used it yet. I thought we can cast it on, but I'm going to be using yarn that I bought Again, it's been a couple of years and it's been sitting waiting for this perfect project from the Wool Kitchen, which is based in the UK. So if you are UK based, then you might want to order from the Wool Kitchen. But this is the yarn that I've got. This is BFL nylon in a fingering weight. And the colour is called Ground Control. So I'm going to cake this up and when I start knitting with it, every time I come up to this bright orange pop I'm going to do something different I'm going to well I'm going to follow the pattern but <laughs> I'm going to do a, a stitch pattern a stitch technique that really um, exaggerates that that pop so like I said Leslie Ann is just wonderful at brioche patterns so this is taking that concept of assigned pooling and bringing it to brioche knitting two color brioche knitting so you're going to have like your main color, which is this. And then every time you come up to this color here, you're going to create a, a, a pop, a little bobble. And then you've got your second color, which is going to sit at the back. And this is my second color. This is from Ginger Twist Studio. This is the Sheepish Sock, which is also BFL nylon. And it's going in the colorway Breakfast with Ginger. Look at those colors together. It's going to be so good. The shawl pattern is called Audacious. And I think that is a suitably audacious colourway choice. <laughs> so that's uh, that's one future cast on. And I, like I said, this has been sitting in stash for a good long while. I actually bought two skeins from my mum at the same time, which I think was in the Wool Kitchen's Bamboo and Silk, was it? Fingering Weight? I can't remember what the color way that she'd, but it was a beautiful sort of like a khaki color, like a gold khaki. And the the color, the zip, which is what um, they, they call it on, from the wool kitchen, was in almost like um, con confetti colors, you know, like pastel colors. And mum used it to make the calico shawl by Don Barker, which again uses this assigned pooling technique. It's a beautiful shawl. And uh, and yes, so mum used hers for that. I have yet to use mine, but this is the project. This is the project I want to use it for. The next project that's going to be going on my needles is another lento. <laughs> so, and I always knew I wanted to make this into a lento because I think it's going to be glorious. I'm going to use this Drops Nord, which is a merino, uh, not merino, a wool, yeah, a wool nylon alpaca blend. So it's 45% alpaca, 30% polyamide and 25% wool. It's very, very soft. And I'm going to combine it with this, which is Voilette Nuit en Sorcelle by La Droguerie. And I picked this up and I've got three little mini cones. And I picked that up uh, when I was in Bordeaux pre-pandemic. So, um, so I'm going to hold these two together and you can see it's got this Stellina, but it's like copper. It's a copper Stellina. And I think I'm actually going to do the folded collar on this next one. And I think with this, uh, the raglan increases are made by knit one front and back on both sides. And I might do a slightly more traditional make one left, make one right um, on, the, on the raglan edging. And I'll just knit it, I'll knit it to the same length as this one because that length suits me better. I actually took out a jumper, it was the flax. I knitted myself a flax light. I took that one out and I measured the length of it and went, that's a jumper that I feel really comfortable wearing and, and is very easy to wear. So what length is that? And then I knitted the lento, uh, the first lento to that length. And I'm gonna do the same with this one. So. More lento plans. Oh, there's actually another lento plan. Okay. <laughs> Although this one's not going to be for me. 
This one is going to be for my daughter. It's in Drops again. I picked this up on a D stash. It's Drops Merino Extra Fine, which is a DK, and it's in a charcoal. So I would just hold this single, and I would knit the small size, the smallest size they have, because because Aurora's um, not as uh, busty and big as her, her mother. <laughs> So, and um, the smallest size they have, and uh, that will be a super quick knit, and it will hardly use any yarn at all. So, those are the two lentils. One, another one for myself, and one for my girl, one for my daughter. And then that leaves me with the final acquisition because I felt like I couldn't leave this, um, and not show you because, um, so many of you enjoyed hearing my, I wouldn't call it a tale of woe. I'd call it a tale of misunderstanding, uh, but I had gotten confused uh, when I ordered this from Woolly Knit. They were doing a jumbo cone sale. The clue is in the title. And <laughs> I'm used to buying 500 gram cones. This was marketed as a 1.6 kilo cone. I have no idea why, but my brain did some mental gymnastics and decided that 1.6 was less than 500. <laughs> and so I jumped on it and I bought this cone and it was only after I did that that I realized that I'd bought basically six and a half kilometers worth of this yarn. So I'm gonna be knitting with this yarn for the rest of my life. It's actually really heavy. <laughs> I will confess, I have used it as a footstool. Um, it's, <laughs> it's in the colourway Harvest. So you've got the Harvest British wool. You can see marled with um, white cotton. It's quite loosely plied, actually. You can see there. Uh, I actually have some Harvest in the British wool for ply. So which I could pair with it for stripes or something. This is the yarn that I was telling you I didn't really have a plan for. Sometimes you just think it's a really good deal and then it turns out to be an even better deal than you thought but then you've got so much yarn you don't know what to do with. That's this. So uh, I have followed this up with another order which has not arrived but it is D Hardwick's The Knitted Fabric book and it is a new publication from Lina. It came out before Christmas. I've had my eye on this book for a long time. I was following Dee um, on Instagram and her process and her creative practice and the insight that she was sharing behind the, the creation of this book just fascinated me. And then of course Christmas came around and then you know buying everything else for everybody else and then I saw that Lina magazine were doing a friends sale. So apparently in Finland, which is where Lina is based, um, they celebrate uh, Valentine's Day, but not for romantic love, but for friends and for friendship. And it's a, it's a festival, um, a festive day to celebrate friendship. So they have this friends sale. So they have some discounts on their magazines and their books. And so I went on just on the off chance that they might have uh, a discounted copy of The Knitted Fabric, and they did. They had a second copy. So I don't know, it'll be slightly damaged or the printing will be off or there'll be something about it, but um, I'm sure I'll be able to still follow the patterns and still be able to enjoy the book. Um, but it was quite, it was reduced by quite a lot. I think I got it for about 18 pounds. And I was so excited. And I moved through the whole process of, you know, snagging the, the bargain, so to speak. Um, then it was only when I finished going through the process, I realised that I was paying £14 for the shipping. So, <laughs> so it's really only like marginally cheaper than it would have been otherwise if I had bought it in person. But um, it's on its way. I'm really excited about it. And I think a lot of the patterns um, have a focus on homeware. And I think that I can use this massive jumbo cone with some of my scrappy leftovers. You know, those kind of leftovers that are too small really to do anything much 
with. Um, like you can't, can't make a berry, for example, with them. <laughs> uh, so I thought maybe I'll be able to pair them and create some really beautiful homeware over the course of this, over the course of this year. Because really, I, there's only so many jumpers and shawls one girl needs. <laughs> Not that that's stopping me. <laughs> but maybe I should do a little bit more homeware. I, I love this. Um, this has been a huge success. This is the Quadrangle Spires by uh, Stephen West in Hillesvog Solje, and I absolutely love it. And it's and it's just used as a throw in this in this room. So um, so yes, I think some more some more homeware pieces would would be really lovely, and I think maybe that's the yarn for that. So there we go. That's the dream knitting. We're getting there, my loves. Uh, last of all, what's bringing me joy? Okay, last time I mentioned that I was really enjoying Three Pines on Amazon, which is a wonderful detective series featuring Armand Gamache, who is just, I think, a wonderful character, really, really interesting, really kind of bucks the trend of a lot of um, police drama uh, protagonists. And uh, it's set in Quebec, and yeah, I just thought it was fabulous. It's eight episodes, four two-parters, so you can sit down and watch two parts together and it's like two hours and you've got like a full story, but then there's a larger overarching narrative. So when I shared that, lots of people got in touch to say, if you like that, then please check out the books because the books are even better. So I was like, okay. So when I was sick, I downloaded the first book of the Armand Gamache series. Keep in mind, there are 18 books by Louise Penny in the Armand Gamache series. So I downloaded the first as an audible book and I was listening to it while I was unwell, uh, which wasn't, I mean, it was, you know, when you're not well, the, um, the boundary between conscious and dream world are thin and... <laughs> So I've had lots of uh, strange dreams now about the residents of Three Pines and <laughs> but I have really got I've really enjoyed getting to know the other characters uh, whereas in the TV series you really very much focus on Armand himself whereas in the in the books you get a much sort of better rounded uh, insight into all the characters and that really kind of helps you to create a connection to them that I felt was missing in the TV series so I was really enjoying that the only problem was was because I was ill I kept falling asleep and then of course the audiobook continues on and then I would wake up and I wouldn't know where I where I'd fallen asleep so um so I've not finished I still have to figure out where it got to so that I can finish it off but I have some good ideas about who done it but anyway, Still Life is the first book in the Three Pines, or not Three Pines trilogy, in the Armand Gamache series, of which there's 18, not three, <laughs> books to get on with. So I've been enjoying that. Death in Paradise has returned to the BBC. Um, it's, it's my happy comfort place. This is the series that got us through the pandemic. <laughs> Or one of the series that got us through the pandemic, certainly. Um, I really enjoy it. It's uh, set in the uh, fictional island of San Marie. I think it's actually filmed in Guadeloupe. And it's, as my, as my friend Jen calls it, a cosy murder series. So it's, <laughs> it's not uh, brutal. It's not, uh, you know, noir by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> It's uh, very gentle and um, it's just kind of like a, a detective. So there's a murder that happens at the very beginning and then the rest of the show is about, you know, trying to figure out who done it. Um, and it's being released one episode at a time on BBC at the moment. So, uh, so I'm enjoying that. And the other thing on the BBC that I am obsessed with, genuinely, is the kind of thing that I watched and now I find myself trawling YouTube for interviews with the actors or with like insights on behind the scenes or, you know, speaking to the, the costume designer about all of, you know, I'm just, I'm at that level of um, 
just wanting to immerse myself in more and more of this particular TV show, more of this story. And it's The English, which has Emily Blunt and Chaskay Parker. And oh, if you have not seen it already, I highly recommend it. It is um, violent, but I wouldn't say the violence happens on screen in general. Um, what I mean, it's a Western, you know, but it's a Western that doesn't take the cowboy, the white male cowboy as the central protagonist. And instead you have um, a Pawnee uh, scout that's worked for the, that's that's been in the army and he's now going on a land, he's got a land claim in Nebraska. And then you've got the Emily Blunt character who has come over, who's a, a lady who's come over from um, England to revenge the, the death of her child. Um, it's six episodes. It's shot just outside of Madrid. It is completely beautiful. I mean, the cinematography on it is amazing. And it's this epic love story that plays out and it's just, it's completely magical. And I thought it was so interesting and, and the, the history of it was fascinating. The acting is just beyond the beyond. Um, I, like I said, I'm just, I think it is one of the best things on television in a very long time. So if you haven't watched that um, and, you're, and you're okay with managing some some violent scenes uh, like i said it's not super, it's not super violent and i think all the violence more or less happens off screen and then you've got the the result um but it's not i don't can't, i think there's only one scene that i thought at the very beginning that was a bit gory but other than that there's there's really not so it's not disturbing um from that perspective um but brilliant i don't feel like i'm selling it enough here it's brilliant <laughs> Uh, on a completely different note, we watched some movies when we weren't well. Uh, we watched Little Miss Sunshine, which, you know, it's one of those movies that everybody has seen. And then you start to feel a bit uncomfortable because saying that you've not seen it because everybody's seen it. It's been out for ages. And, <laughs> and I loved it. I loved everything about it. I thought it was completely joyful. I thought, again, it kind of bucked the trend and, and sort of... Um, transcended some of the the generic conventions that we hold around um, some movies. I thought, I just thought it was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Again, very, very well acted. Uh, very enjoyable. It's my friend, one, it's my friend Rye is one of her favourite movies. And uh, so when we were looking for a movie to watch, I, I saw that one and I went, well, Raya says that's a good one, so we'll, we'll watch that one. So we did, and we really, really loved it. Unfortunately, we followed it up with um, Don't Look Up with Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and uh, we really didn't like that. <laughs> well, I didn't, I really didn't like it. I was not a fan. So that's not one of the things that's bringing me joy. But Little Miss Sunshine, absolutely. Next thing, Scottish Bull Producers Showcase is coming up. And just the prospect of it is bringing me joy. <laughs> it's going to happen on the 25th of March. Tickets go on sale on the 4th of February. It's going to be in Perth, um, which is, gosh, it's only about an hour in the train from Edinburgh or from Glasgow, so it's not far. It's absolutely, you know, part of the, the central belt, so it's quite easy to access. Uh, I really like Perth. I think uh, it's a lovely place. I think it's got really nice cafes and restaurants and... Uh, and yes, it has the Scottish, which is now, it was the Perth um, Festival of Yarn, it's now the Scottish Festival of Yarn and uh, the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase, both organised there by Eva and she does a wonderful job of it and uh, I'm really excited to attend. There's already a list of the vendors and it's just, it's just going to be completely glorious. So I'm really excited about that. I uh, have a couple of episodes, a couple of um, podcasts to, to recommend. The first one was I watched Fruity Knitting, episode 127, which was the one where um, Natasha Hornby from Moonstruck Knits co-hosted. And it just made me want to knit all of the Moonstruck Knits patterns. So 
I suspect I will be returning. I've, I've got quite a few in my in my library actually. So, um, and I have knitted a few. I knitted the letho for myself and the letho we for my husband, and I also knitted the lunae shawl as well. Um, so I've got my eye on a few shawls and a few jumpers, especially after watching that episode because it was excellent. The other episode that I wanted to share was of the Brook Willow podcast, Brook Willow Knits. And she had an episode called How to Build a Cohesive Wardro Handmade Wardrobe with Your Personal Style. And I thought it was really excellent. I thought it was really well done. It was really interesting. Um, she really showcased her own expertise, particularly working with mood boards. Um, I was really interested in that and uh, highly recommend that also. Lastly, uh, there has been an announcement about a new book from Lina, which is a curated collection from Amy Gilles, who is the creatrix behind La bien -Aimée. And it's called Neons and Neutrals. I'm seeing some really, really interesting patterns being um, previewed before the launch of this particular publication. And I think it looks fascinating. There's some amazing colour work, some really interesting use of texture. It looks really innovative, very different. And I'm really excited to maybe get my hands on a copy and, uh, and share that with you in, in a future episode. But yes, I have my eye on it. Okay, my darlings, gosh, this has ended up a bit longer than usual, but <laughs> there was a lot to catch you up on. As I said, I think January is a particularly long month. But I wanted to share with you a poem just to finish us off. And uh, it's by Ursula Le Guin and it's called Initiation Song from the Finder's Lodge. Please bring strange things. Please come bringing new things. Let very old things come into your hands. Let what you do not know come into your eyes. Let desert sand harden your feet. Let the arch of your feet be the mountains. Be the paths, let the paths of your fingertips be your maps and the ways you go be the lines on your palms. Let there be deep snow in your in-breathing and your out-breath be the shining of ice. May your mouth contain the shapes of strange words. May you smell food cooking you have not eaten. May the spring of a foreign river be your navel May your soul be at home where there are no houses. Walk carefully, well-loved one. Walk mindfully, well-loved one. Walk fearlessly, well-loved one. Return with us. Return to us. Be always coming home. I thought that was a beautiful poem to begin a new year with. And so it's my, my blessing for you this year. Uh, may it be off to a good start, a healthy start. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to catching up with you all again at the end of next month. Keep in mind, if you want to catch up before then, I will be doing another Sit and Knit With Me episode uh, over on my Patreon, uh, Patreon. yeah, around about mid-month. Okay, my loves, speak to you all really soon. Take good care. <laughs>